Mark Rob Moffat. Guy's been wanting to do this video for a long time on how to live on twelve thousand dollars a year in South Florida, specifically in Broward County, in Sunrise where I'm at. I've done this video three times. Uh, I started keeping a spreadsheet and an expense tracker in May. This is the seventh month. I've wanted to see if I could live on about twelve thousand a year, about a thousand a month, because now that I'm retired. I have a limited income, uh, I have some side businesses and so on, and some savings, but a lot of people, they just live on their Social Security, which is not supposed to happen, it's supposed to be supplemental. I thought it'd be interesting to see uh, how I'm trying to do it. I haven't actually met my targets on everything, but I thought it would be interesting to go over uh, how I'm facing the challenge of living on a thousand dollars a month. I know there's like billions of people on earth that probably live for just a few dollars a day so this is like <laughs> not their problem and there's a lot of people who who make a lot more than I'm making that probably think well there's a guy who made some bad choices <laughs> uh, I, I don't care I thought this might help a few people um, and I'm gonna give it a shot the the budget I made if you don't learn or pick up anything in the video except this point the video was a success I've never used a budget before in my life or an expense tracker I did when I had a business but in my personal life I never did I didn't was never exposed to one when I was I grew up poor uh, the projects in Miami uh, Little River Terraces uh, Large Point Gardens I think it's called Pork and Beans now <laughs> but yeah my parents they, they didn't my mom didn't have a budget she, she didn't keep a budget. She, she kept her kids out of, out of jail and tried to keep them out of the hospital and tried to keep them in school and keep food in jail. Well, she never kept a budget. <laughs> when the landlord knocked on the door, we knew we had a cash flow problem. When the lights went out, there was an issue. Uh, so that's not the right way to live. Um, if I had kept a budget and expense tracker growing up, it would have changed my financial life. If you don't, there, there's, there's dozens and dozens and dozens of different types of budgets you can use. Electronic digital ones on your phone, on your computer. You can carry on with you or you can do something as simple as I'm doing I just keep my receipts and I go over the end of the month my uh, credit card statements and bank statements and so on and just write everything down and it's simple paper tracker and then uh, at the end of the month I put it in a spreadsheet and it's simple spreadsheet uh, even even a dummy like me <laughs> this graph still doesn't look right there's a few things wrong with this graph I think I'd zig when I should have zagged but uh, I'm I'm over budget. I'm not meeting my my thousand dollar a month. I've had some some uh, some surprises. But but the key point what we we got off from is if you keep an expense tracker and a budget, you're going to know exactly where you're at every single month and whether you're meeting your financial goals. The budget tracker, an expense tracker and budget. It's a wonderful tool. It, like if you have a goal in life, financial goal. It tells you whether you're circling the drain, or how fast you're circling the drain, or, or if you're getting ready to, to take off in the sky toward your, your dreams, your goals, your financial goals. Like, it's that dramatic. Um, otherwise, you're just flying by the seat of your pants. When I had a business, I would find out at the end of the year when I did my income taxes exactly where I stood. But in my personal life, never did. Just made sure I made more than I spent and hoped for the best. But keeping track... Is one of the best things I've done, and I'm I'm old. <laughs> so you're a dumbass if you don't have an expense tracker and a budget. A budget sounds terrible because it is. It, it it it's something that stops you from doing something. When you're poor, there's always something stopping you. But think of it as a break. An expense tracker is like your odometer and speedometer, and it tells you how fast you're going and where you're going. So also, you're not going to let that budget tell you what to do. It's going to be like it's going to be a reminder. <laughs> You're still going to do what you want, but it's going to tell you whether you should be doing it or not. It's also going to be freedom because you know that month if you want to do something and, and you haven't met your budget yet, you can go ahead and spend the money. So there's many, it's, we can go talk for an hour about that. But the most smart, important thing you can do listening to this video is just get you a simple budget. You can get these for uh, Office Depot or Amazon for six bucks. And then use a pencil and an eraser. Then at the end of the month, put it in your spreadsheet on your computer. 
So that's that's the main tip. If you want to not watch the rest of the video, you're, you're, we're good to go. <laughs> as far as the budget for $12,000 a year, I'm not going to go into great detail. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. For We'll, we'll put up here as I go along. Because I was I initially made this video three times, and I put the spreadsheet on the computer, but it was so small to read. I know some people will be looking at this on their phone. They won't be able to read it. So we'll try to make this quick, and we'll put the numbers up here. For food, my budget for the month is $180. Uh, I eat good. <laughs> Clothing, $10. I dress. <laughs> I just 12 thrift stores within half an hour to drive. Uh, the, 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 the rent mortgage, I have rent mortgage. I own the apartment. It's a very inexpensive, very small one bedroom, 55 and over community. It's the, the least expensive one they had. If you had purchased one at the bottom of the real estate depression, the 2010 and 8, you could have gotten one for like $12,000. And they're, they're only, right now, they're only like up in the 30s. High 30s. So, uh, electricity, $69. Telephone, I use, I use a flip phone and a magic jack, $12. Household expenses, uh, about 30 bucks. Car maintenance and gas, I don't drive a lot. I take a bicycle a lot of times. And I basically just go to the doctor's office or Walmart or relatives that are fishing. And I still don't drive that much. So it's inexpensive. I also have a 25-year-old Corolla. The Moon Rover. <laughs> I just gave it a new paint job. Still doing good. Um, easy parts to find, easy to fix. Car insurance, it's killing me. 92 bucks a month. I've done everything. I took the safety class to reduce 10% for three years and done everything. Uh, still, 92. There's so many people here, they don't have insurance and they drive bad and they have fraudulent claims. The insurance is always high in South Florida. Education. I'm always, because I have side businesses, I'm always trying to learn more, and I spend a little bit on forums and books and so on. Entertainment, <laughs> $5. That's my budget. You want to hang around with me, bring a roll of quarters, and you're set for the night, right? Personal care, that's another one, $10. I really went over budget on that one. Gifts, $20. Internet, $53.87. Savings and investment, zero. Medicare, $127. Medical surprises, 50 bucks. YouTube, eBay for business. This is partial. I have 30 bucks a month, but I also have other expenses for a business that isn't covered here because um, that's for tax purposes and it wouldn't apply to everyone anyway. And the apartment tax is 3576 even with homestead exemption. Now, <clears throat> most of these I'm pretty close every month, but I went over by a lot on three or four areas. Um, right now, instead of a thousand dollars a month, I'm closer to like thirteen or fourteen hundred dollars a month, because the last seven months I've had some large expenses. But two or three of them were my own personal choices. Number one, I went over budget um, by five hundred seventy-seven dollars <laughs> on personal care because I purchased a pistol. <laughs> it's personal. It takes care of me. Um, I had to take the concealed weapons class, and I had to uh, get the permit, and I had to buy the pistol, and so on, and then you got to buy some accessories. It's 577 bucks. If you guys watch my channel, you probably saw the video I did on the Taurus PT-22. That's the baby, 577 bucks um, total for the class and everything. The next one is investments. <laughs> That's what I'm calling it. It's not really investment. Uh, there was a, uh, there is a site called Predicted.org. You can bet on political and uh, current events, whether you think this or that's going to happen. I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit of a political junkie, and um, I was looking at the choices for the Democrat nominee for the presidential uh, nomination for the uh, uh, their candidacy, and I tried to pick who I thought the Democrats would pick, and I saw Tulsi Gabbard was down a two cents, and I said she should be a little higher than two cents. So I put a lot of money on her. And to hedge my bet, I put some money on Elizabeth Warren when she was 15 cents. And I watched her rise to 50 cents, and I said, oh, I'm a genius. <laughs> now she's she's coming back down. <laughs> and Tulsi's still at two cents. But um, Tulsi right now, I think she's in sixth place in the New Hampshire poll. So uh, there's a chance, like, if she goes to, like, 20 cents or 30 cents, I could just 
cash out and make quite a bit. But if she would actually get the nomination, which is a pipe dream, it would be like sixteen and a half thousand dollars. So if Warren would get it, I get most of all my money back and a little bit extra. So it, it's really not investment, but it was just a gamble. But I'm thinking sixteen and a half thousand dollars for a five hundred dollar bet on Tulsi. That's not a bad bet. I, I, I don't usually bet. I haven't bet or gambled in years and years and years. Next one is medical. I had to go to the dermatologist for a checkup. I had to go to the eye doctor and it was $200 for this and $200 for that. Then I went to the hospital twice. Um, once it was just a gallbladder issue. They want to take it out. But uh, I'd never had any other issues prior. So I'm just eating a lot of apples every day, which has malic acid. And I make a big pot of uh, greens, soup, uh, split peas and uh, collards and kale and so on. It's a real kind of uh, like a bitter uh, soup. Um, and the greens are really good for, for the liver and the gallbladder. And uh, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Uh, Dr. Google told me so. Um, so yeah, there was a lot of medical expenses that I wasn't. Even though I, I, I put 50 bucks a month extra over the Medicare. And I spent a little bit over on my YouTube Amazon purchases for the business so all told I'm about 24 about about the three thousand dollars over for my budget and it's only seven months in but I won't be making any more personal care purchase or or investment purchases and hopefully no more medical surprises and so I thought if you're interested uh, my journey on uh, how I'm attempting to to meet my budget of uh, 12,000 a year that's where I'm at um, and I'll give you another update and the end of the 12 months this is seven months in and if you have any questions uh, I'm going to be doing some more videos on personal finance uh, like passive income ways I've over the years made some money on the side side hustles also advantages and disadvantages of living in Florida that could be a long video also low-cost housing because I know when I mentioned that I live in a 55 and over community uh, building people will say well that doesn't apply to them but but I live in so many places in Florida I've, I've I'm, I'm a native my family's been here since 1919 and I've lived in a lot of inexpensive places, so we could we could do a video about low inexpensive places that I've lived in the past in Florida, and uh, just a video about trying to have a plan B, uh, which, along with starting your expense tracker and budget, is also good to have a plan B. Well, guys, I'm getting ready to go to Walmart and try to get another Cuban yo-yo. This is my latest gadget. <laughs> You put this in the beach, in the sand, and then you throw this out into the surf, and you put this on, and the line goes up here, and when you get a fish, it pops out, and then the reel starts going, and you grab it. Because surf fishing rods are like, and reels are like 100, 150 bucks a piece. And uh, I thought I'd get something that I could put four or five out. These would all fit in a bag. I could even, if my car wasn't working, I could take the bus. And just throw them out and reel them in on hand reel and put it back on on the gadget and uh, good to go. <laughs> Going to see what happens. Um, so that's where we're at. I hope this is something helpful and uh, interesting to you about your journey if you're trying to cut back on expenses and keep a budget and for the last time keep a budget and expense tracker. It's one of the best things you can do. Don't be a dumbass like I was most of my life. All right, guys, um, I'm rambling here. It's time to go. And uh, hopefully, hopefully we'll have some more personal finance videos coming out real soon, along with some beach videos. <laughs> See you out there.